University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Twelve teams are already through to the second round of this competition. Tonight's winners will join them. The losers could get one more chance to qualify if their score is among the four highest losing scores. And we now know that a losing score of above 155 will guarantee seats in the playoffs. Now, the University of St Andrews last won this competition back in 1982, long before tonight's team was even born. <laughs> Founded in the early 15th century, it's fond of its traditions, such as the wearing of red gowns for the perilous Sunday morning pier walk after chapel, and alumni who may have enjoyed such things include the former SNP leader Alex Salmond, the novelist Faye Weldon, the sports presenter Hazel Irvin, and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, representing around 11,000 students with an average age of 20. Let's welcome the St Andrews team. Hi, I'm Matt Eccleston. I'm originally from St Helens in Merseyside, and I'm studying international relations in Spanish. Hello there, my name's James Green. I'm from Schaffhausen in Switzerland, and I'm studying German and Persian. And this is their captain? Hi, I'm Toby Parker. I'm originally from Bristol and I'm studying maths. Hi, I'm Andrew Vokes. I'm from Edinburgh and I'm studying chemistry. Their opponents represent Worcester College, Oxford, which was founded in 1714 by the benefaction of Sir Thomas Cooks, a Worcestershire baronet. It claims to be the only Oxford college to have a lake in which students apparently immerse themselves after exams. Alumni who may have done so include the media mogul Rupert Murdoch, the actor Emma Watson and the newsreader Sir Alistair Burnett representing around 580 students and also with an average age of 20. Let's meet the Worcester team. Hi, I'm Sam Barnett. I'm from Butker Steel in Essex and I'm reading maths and philosophy. Hi, I'm Rosemary Wormsley. I'm from Solihull in the West Midlands and I'm studying maths and philosophy. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Nick Williams. I'm from London and I'm also reading maths and philosophy. Hi, I'm Dennis Wang. I'm from Manchester and I'm studying maths. OK, the rules are unchanging, so fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. Quote, human history becomes more and more a race between education and catastrophe, unquote. Which literary figure wrote those words in the 1920 work The Outline of History, 25 years after the appearance of his first novel, The Time Machine? Worcester Barnett. H.G. Wells. Correct. The first set of bonuses are on forms of amusement, Worcester College. Denoting satirical imitation, what five-letter word has its origins in a game involving trickery and nonsense invented by the British comedian Arthur Roberts in the late 19th century? Satirical forms of imitation. Charades, no, it's too long. Yeah, five letters. Five letters. Charades. That's not got five letters. It's spoof. Uh, Derived from an Italian word meaning to load, what term describes a picture or description that exaggerates a person's peculiarities or defects? Caricature. Correct. John Gay's Beggar's Opera can be viewed as an example of what literary or artistic form that ridicules by means of grotesque exaggeration or imitation. From the late 19th century, the term came to be applied to an often risque form of stage performance. Uh, cabaret. Cabaret. cabaret? No, it's burlesque. <sighs> Ten points for this. From the Latin for little affinity, referring to its low chemical reactivity, what term denotes a waxy, flammable solid consisting of a mixture of hydrocarbons obtained as a residue from the distillation of petroleum? It was also formally given to the series of saturated hydrocarbons now usually called alkanes. St Andrews Parker. Paraffin. Correct. <laughs> well, giving a right answer, you do look a bit miserable about it. <laughs> <laughs> Here are your bonuses. They're on science in the 1870s. In 1876, which British naturalist published the geographical distribution of animals? He gives his name to a hypothetical line that separates the fauna of Australasia from that of Asia. Alfred Russell Wallace. Correct. 
In a work of 1875, the Austrian geologist Edward Seuss coined which term for the region of Earth where life can exist? You can give the German term or the English version. The green border? No, it's the biosphere. In 1871, which British naturalist published The Descent of Man and Selection in Relation to Sex? That's Charles Darwin. It is. Charles Darwin. Correct. Ten points for this. He's got eyebrows that look surprised or cross, so that's how I found the voice. He talks up and down like that most of the time. These words of the actress Susan Sheridan refer to which fictional character whom she voiced in a BBC television adaptation of works by Enid Blyton. Uh, Worcester Williams. Noddy. Noddy is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on the works of Roald Dahl. In each case, identify the story by the extract from its opening paragraphs. It's a funny thing about mothers and fathers. Even when their own child is the most disgusting little blister you could imagine, they still think that he or she is wonderful. Is it Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah. Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, that's Matilda. Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were selfish and lazy and cruel. They never called him by his real name, but always referred to him as you disgusting little beast or you filthy nuisance or you miserable creature. James and the Giant Peach. Correct. Be a good boy and don't get up to mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately George made him wonder what sort of mischief he might get up to. George's Marvelous Medicine. George's Marvelous Medicine. That's correct. Well done. <laughs> right, we're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see a map displaying the diocese of the Church of England. For ten points, I want you to identify the highlighted diocese. St Andrew's Ely? Green. Oh, Ely. Ely is correct, yes. <laughs> Picture bonuses are three more Church of England dioceses for you to identify. Five points for each. Firstly, diocese number one. It's not Hereford, is it? No, it's not. It's like North Shrewsbury. No, Shrewsbury. Mm -hmm. In here. Uh, Shrewsbury might not be a bad guy. He said Shrewsbury. I don't know. Shrewsbury? No, it's Lichfield, second lead diocese number two. Uh, Southwark, I think. Southwark, I think. Southwark. Southwark is right. And finally, diocese number three. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's about Wales. Wales. Bath and Wales. Bath and Wales. The baby eating yeah. bishop of Bath and Wales. Certainly, Wells isn't there. Bath and Wells. It is the Diocese of Bath and Wells. Ten points for this. Despite having earlier spent almost 20 years in exile, which writer's body lay in state under the Arc de Triomphe in 1885 before receiving a burial in the Pantheon? Described as the most powerful mind of the Romantic movement, his works include the verse drama Cromwell and the prose play Lucrece Borgia. St Andrew's Green. Victor Hugo? Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on optics this time, St Andrew's. Which optical aberration in a lens is due to the different focal lengths of rays of different orientations? For example, those propagating in horizontal and vertical planes. Disjoint focus? No, it's astigmatism. What optical aberration occurs when rays emanating from an off-axis point do not quite converge at the focal plane, creating a comet-like blur from the optical axis? A bokeh? Uh, that's chromatic aberration. And finally, named after the company in York where it was invented in 1893, what type of compound lens is the simplest design capable of correcting all of the seven sidal aberrations over a wide field of view? I don't know. I only know one thing. I'm not York, and that's Roman trees. 
Smithsons. No, that's the cook triplet. Ten points for this. Listen carefully. In telecommunications theory, when converting analogue to digital signals, the Nyquist interval states that in order to recreate the original signal, the sampling rate must be at least how many times the highest frequency in the sample? St Andrew's Green. Three. No. Worcester, one of you buzz. Worcester, Wormsley. Two. Two is correct. Twice is right. <laughs> Your bonuses are on a Governor-General of India, Worcester College. Which future Governor-General of India was defeated at Yorktown, Virginia, in the last major campaign of the American War of Independence? Cornwallis. 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 Correct. Known as the Tiger of Mysore, which Indian ruler was briefly defeated by Cornwallis's forces in 1792 during the Third Mysore War? Haider Ali. Nominate Wang. Haider Ali. No, it was Tipu Sultan. And finally, developed under Cornwallis's guidance in 1793, the code named after him underpinned the administrative system of British India for 40 years. In which eastern Indian province was it first implemented? Eastern, yeah. Eastern, um, we've got Assam or West Bengal or something. Um, I'm going to nominate, nominate Wang, uh, Assam. No, it's Bengal. <laughs> Ten points for this. Which major US city is named after a Franciscan friar often invoked as a finder of lost property? The mission founded there in 1718 was the site of resistance to a Mexican army in 1836 and is now a state ah. Worcester Wang. San Antonio. Correct. That gives you the lead. And you get a set of bonuses on romantic poets, Worcester College. Of which romantic poet did William Hazlitt write, whatever he does, he must do in a more decided and daring manner than anyone else. He lounges with extravagance and yawns so as to alarm the reader. It's quite relaxed, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Byron? Correct. Byron described which romantic poet as... Truth itself and honour itself, notwithstanding his out-of-the-way notions about religion. Uh, Shelley? Correct. Mm. Twenty years his senior, which romantic poet did Shelley describe as a cloud-encircled meteor of the air, a hooded eagle among blinking owls? Okay. John, Keats. Yeah, Keats. John Keats. No, it's Coleridge. Ten points for this. Which mathematician was the first person to formulate and solve an integral equation? In 1824, he published a proof of the impossibility of solving algebraically the general equation of the fifth degree and died five years later. St Andrews Parker. Galois. No, you lose five points and died five years later at the age of 26 in southern Norway. Ah. Worcester Wang. Abel. Abel is correct, yes. <laughs> you get three bonuses on historiography, Worcester College. The historical work known in English as the Universal Mirror to Aid Government spans almost 14 centuries from 403 BCE and runs to more than 9,500 pages in the standard modern edition. It was written in the 11th century in which language? Yeah, I was going to say Sanskrit. Is that too late for Sanskrit? I don't know. Um, it could be Arab Arabic. Yeah. Aramaic. Could be, could be Chinese. I think, but I don't, I don't actually know. Chinese. It could be Chinese. Arabic. Chinese. Arabic. No, it's classical Chinese. Uh, secondly, the Universal Mirror was compiled on the orders of Ying Zong, an emperor of which dynasty founded in 960? Yeah. Song? Correct. During the last year of his life, spent largely in bed, which political figure is said to have reread the Universal Mirror for the 18th time? He died in September 1976. That's uh, Mao, probably. That was Sorry? 76, yeah. 76 was Chairman Mao. Uh, Chairman Mao? It was Mao, yes. <laughs> Right, we're going to take a music round for you. A music starter, you'll hear a well-known operatic overture. For ten points, I want the title of the opera. Carmen.
Carmen. St. Andrews Green. I'm sorry, Carmen. Carmen is correct, yes. Your music bonuses are three more classical works from outside the Iberian Peninsula, inspired nevertheless by Spanish folk melodies and dance forms. Five points for each composer you can identify. Firstly, for five, a Russian composer. Nominate Green. Rimsky Korsakov? Correct. Secondly, another Russian composer. Tchaikovsky? No, that's Glinka. Finally, a French composer. Ravel? It is Ravel, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. Holyrood to mean the Scottish Parliament and brass to mean senior military officers are examples of what figure of speech? The term is derived from the Greek for name change. What's the wang? Metonym. Metonym is correct. Your bonuses are on astrophysics, Worcester College. In astrophysics, the letters CO stand for what two-word term used for any small, dense end product of stellar evolution, such as a white dwarf? Nominate Barnett. Collapsed object. No, it's compact object. What type of compact object might have a density of about 10 to the 17 or 100 million billion kilograms per cubic metre? Neutron star. Correct. Finally, what type of compact object can result from the further gravitational collapse of a neutron star? Black hole. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Concatenate a short word, meaning a subdivision of an eon in geological time, and a three-letter suffix denoting an angle in geometry. This gives the six-letter title of which 2002 work, the first in the inheritance cycle by Christopher... St Andrews Green. Aragon. Aragon is correct, yes. <laughs> you get three questions on the political campaigner and anarchist Emma Goldman. Firstly, Emma Goldman emigrated to the US at the age of 16, having been born in 1869 in Kovno, now known as Kaunas, in which present-day country? <laughs> Lithuania. Correct. Emma Goldman turned to anarchism following the Haymarket Affair of 1886 when police opened fire on a workers' gathering in which US city? Milwaukee. No, it was Chicago. Claiming to have been inspired by Emma Goldman, Leon Cholgosh assassinated which US president in 1901? William McKinley. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Covered by a sand dune for hundreds of years until it was exposed by a storm in 1850, which Neolithic site in the Orkney Islands consists of well-preserved stone dwellings connected by a series of passages? St Andrew's Vokes. Scarabray. Scarabray is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on the playwright Joe Orton. Which 1965 play by Orton opens with a grieving Catholic widower being ardently propositioned by his dead wife's nurse. I don't know what it's called. Uh, Trilute, because that's a play by him. Lute. It's the only one I know. OK. Lute. Lute is correct. The denouement of which play of 1964 sees a middle-aged brother and sister negotiate to share the favours of the eponymous amoral young man? Um, oh, it's Mr Sloan, something. Something Mr Sloan. Just try Mr. Sloan. Mr. Sloan? No, it's entertaining Mr. Sloan, the full title. So I can't accept that. And finally, first performed in 1969, two years after Orton's death, the play What the Butler Saw includes a climactic scene featuring an intimate body part from a statue of which British statesman? Winston Churchill. Correct. 
We're going to take a second picture out now. Your picture starter, you're going to see a still from a recent award-winning documentary. For ten points, I want the title of that documentary. So, Dad, Ruth Eccleston. Selling Secrets. No, anyone like to buzz from Worcester College? Worcester Walmsley. Digital. No, it's Citizen 4, Edward Snowden and Glenn Greenwald there. Uh, so, we'll take the picture bonuses in a moment or two. Here's another starter question. During the Second World War, the military forces of which country were led by Field Marshal Mannerheim? He's particularly associated with the defensive line bearing his name that was employed... St Andrews Eccleston. Finland. Finland is correct. <laughs> so, you take the lead, St Andrews, you get the picture bonuses. Laura Poitras' Citizen Four won both the Academy Award and the BAFTA for Best Documentary in 2015. The picture bonuses are stills from three more recent BAFTA-winning documentaries. In each case, for five points, I want the title of the documentary. Firstly, for five... Searching for Sugar Man, correct. Secondly, the war criminals. Yes. I don't know what it's called. Well, what's it about? It's internet in war criminals. Oh, they want to make a film. Oh, it's the guy with the strange yes. yeah. oh, the glasses. I don't think we need to move on. We don't have to <sighs> move on. Forty years later. No, it's the act of killing. And finally. Senna. Senna is right. <laughs> Ten points for this. In addition to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, three countries have shorelines on Lake Tanganyika. Name two of them. St Andrews Green. Tanzania and Uganda. Nope. Anyone like to bus from Worcester? Worcester Wang. Tanzania and Burundi. Correct. The other one is Zambia. <laughs> These bonuses are on Iraqi cities, Worcester. Encircling the ruins of the ancient Assyrian city of Nineveh, what is Iraq's second largest city? Mosul. Mosul. Correct. Which city was the site of the Battle of 680 that saw the Shiite leader and grandson of Muhammad killed by a force sent by the Umayyad caliph Yazid? Is it... Um, might be Qadisiyah. Nominate Wang. Qadisiyah. No, it's Karbala. And finally, situated on the western bank of the Shat al Arab, which city in southeastern Iraq is the country's principal port? Basra. Basra. Basra is right. Five minutes ago, ten points for this. Serialism is a technique of musical composition associated with which composer born. Worcester Barnett. Schoenberg. Schoenberg is right. These bonuses are on geology. Which large group of minerals combine the two most abundant elements in the Earth's crust? Feldspars are an example. Silicanes? Silicates. Silicates. I know, I'm sorry, I had to take the answer you gave and you were given the right answer, but you misheard it, obviously. Secondly, which group of silicates is characterised by the absence of cleavage planes and a black to dark green colour owing to a high concentration of iron and magnesium. Chrysolite is an example. Those are just names of rocks, but... Yeah. Flints. That's olivine. Cleaving in thin sheets, which aluminium-containing silicate category includes biotites and muscovites? Mica. Mica. Mica is right. Ten points for this. The empty vessel makes the greatest sound. In which of Shakespeare's histories does the boy say those words of Pistol, who has just departed with a French prisoner? St Andrew's Green. Henry V? Correct. <laughs> you will take the lead if you get these uh, bonuses. They're on a sonnet. Which poet's works include a sonnet of 1652 that begins with the words Cromwell, our chief of men? Norton? No, 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 the, uh, the John Donne. Sorry? John Donne. I don't know. Try it. John Donne? 
No, it was Milton. Milton's sonnet mentions three of Cromwell's victories. The first is the Battle of Preston in 1648. Name either of the other two later battles. Naseby? Naseby was before 1648, wasn't it? Um, Worcester? Worcester was one and Dunbar was the other. And finally, Cromwell, Our Chief of Men, is the title of a 1973 biography by which historian? Her other works Antonia include... Antonia Fraser. Uh, Antonia Fraser is right. <laughs> and on the start of the question, listen carefully. Added together, how many stable isotopes exist of the first two elements of the periodic table? Worcester Wormsley. Three. Anyone like to buzz from St Andrews? <laughs> St Andrews Vokes. Four. Four is right, yes. So you take the lead. Your bonuses are on winners of the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. In each case, listen to the English title and name the film's country of origin. Firstly, the 2015 winner, Ida, about a young nun in the 1960s who discovers a dark family secret from the years of the German occupation. Belgium, France. I think probably Belgium. Not France. Belgium. Come on, let's have it, please. Belgium. No, it's Poland. The 2004 winner, The Sea Inside, the story of Ramon San Pedro's 30-year campaign for the right to end his life with dignity. Spain. Correct. The 2008 winner, Departures, in which a newly unemployed cellist takes a job preparing the dead for funerals. Okay. Russia. Russia. Let's have it. Russia. No, it's Japan. Ten points for this. Pinus Silvestris has what two-word common name? It is the only native British conifer to be grown commercially for timber, yielding a wood often known as red deal. St Andrew's Eccleston. Scots pine. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on a King of England, St Andrew's, thought to have been murdered in captivity after the Battle of Mirabeau. Arthur of Brittany was a rival to the succession of which King of England, who was also his uncle? Yes. King John. Correct. In 1208, Pope Innocent III placed England under an interdict when John refused to accept which prelate as Archbishop of Canterbury? Stephen Langdon. Correct. <laughs> you were right, but you don't get the points because it was after the gong. Oh, well. Uh, well, Worcester <laughs> College, you led for much of the way. I thought you were going to be storming through to the next round. 145, though, is not high enough to come back as one of the highest-scoring losing teams, so I'm afraid we're going to be saying goodbye to you. St Andrews, congratulations to you. You go through to the second round. I hope you can join us next time. Until then, though, it's goodbye from Worcester College, Oxford. Goodbye. It's goodbye from St Andrews University. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>